The next task is to create flying leads for the speaker. You'll need two pieces of wire, I've used red and black, and you'll need to cut them to about 10, 12 centimetres long. Each end will need stripping with wire strippers. On these ones, it is best to use the 0.6 hole at the top. Close it and pull the wire through. Again, 0.6, close it, pull the wire through. That then leaves about a centimetre stripped at the end. I need to do the same for the black wire. And then I'm going to put the wires, one at a time, into the peg block. I then want to add some solder to the end of that wire. So I hold the soldering iron on the wire for approximately three seconds and then add some solder to it. I'm going to do the same with the terminal block on the speaker. I can then, making sure I've got a clean soldering iron, hold the soldered bit of wire next to the speaker terminal and heat the two up. And because they're both covered in solder, the two will join. If they come apart, reattach them and wait for the solder to go cool. After a few seconds, it should be fairly strong. You need to repeat the process for the other wire. When both wires are attached, you can pull the two together in the middle and gently twist to tidy the wires up. That'll make it easier to attach to the PCB. For the LEDs, I need to ensure that I have got two pieces of wire. One is going to be for the cathode, the negative, and one is going to be for the anode, which is the positive. I'm going to use red for the anode and I'm going to be using black for the cathode. I will need to strip the end to about one centimetre, and then I can pick up the two, hold with one hand the wire around the longer leg, and then wrap it around like so. Make sure you are definitely on the longer leg, because that will be the positive of the LED. Do exactly the same to the black wire by stripping off a centimetre from the end and then twisting around. We hold it in place and twist around the shorter leg. When I have done both of the LED's legs with the red wire on the longer leg and the black wire on the shorter leg, I can place it into the peg. I'm then going to use the soldering iron, giving it a wipe of course, to solder them in place. And if I hold the soldering iron onto one of the legs for about three seconds, feed in some solder, I should be able to see the solder flowing along the wire. Now I need to do the black one as well. Make sure the solder comes out of the way and then the soldering iron. Leave it for about 10 seconds to cool down and then make sure they don't pull off. Once the LED is soldered, you'll need to get a piece of heat shrink tubing. We can get a piece of black and a piece of red and cut it long enough to cover the exposed wire. The whole point of this is to make sure that the two wires do not touch and therefore conduct electricity between them, making the LED not work. The tubing goes over the joint all the way to the end of the LED, so no wire is exposed.
is worth making sure that the red tube goes on the red wire and the black tube goes on the black wire. Now, heat shrink shrinks when heated, therefore it is easy to use a heat gun, being very careful to make sure that it is not facing anybody because it gets very hot. Turn it on to setting two and point at the heat shrink. Within a few seconds, you'll notice the heat shrink physically shrink and go tight over the solder joint. That will then stop the joints from touching. You'll need to do three LEDs for your circuit. The next component that will need flying leads is the switch. Again, we're going to need, like the LEDs, two pieces of wire. It may make sense after stripping to make sure the strands are twisted together. Pinch the strands together and twist the wire with the other hand, and that will ensure they stay together. Now I need to go through one of the holes, just on one of the terminals, and then bend it back on itself so it looks like a hook. And then twist the switch around so the wire is twisted around that leg. You can do the same for the black wire on the other side. Might make sense to push the red one out of the way for a minute. Twist again, and then they're ready to be soldered. Make sure when you solder that the two do not touch. Once soldered, you'll need to put heat shrink over the terminals. This is exactly the same as the LEDs. Push the heat shrink into place, and then we'll use the heat gun to heat it up. We'll use the heat gun to heat it up. At this point, we can start attaching some of these components to our PCB. The battery box may need the wires stripping on the ends. It might not, so please check before attempting to strip. It is much easier at this stage to make sure that you have twisted these wires together. Hold the strands in one finger, twist the wire, and then they will stay together. I'll do the same for the black one. And there we go. Now the battery is clearly labeled on the PCB. The outside holes are used for strain relief. So I'm going to start with the red wire, going through the hole next to the plus sign. I'm going to loop that over into the inside hole and then fold it on the inside. I'm going to do the same with the black wire. So now I'm going to attach the battery to the circuit board. I need to use the outside strain relief holes to put the wires through. I'm going to put the red through the plus and the black through the minus. Notice they're going from back of the board to the front and then they can be looped over so the wire can be soldered on the back. It might make sense to bend the wire on the inside to make sure that they will fit. Use the soldering iron to solder the wires 
as you would any other component. Once soldered, the speaker, reset switch and LEDs will all need soldering on in the same way as the battery box. Note that it does not matter which way around the speaker goes, but you should still use the strain relief holes. Push from behind first, and then loop the wire over into the right hole. Here I have fed the reset switch and the speaker through the strain relief holes into the PCB. On the reverse, I can then solder those in place. And then the excess wire can be removed.